Welcome to Obedient Family TV. The program is Hope Alive. Yes, there is hope in Nigeria and a new Nigeria is certainly possible. On a good morning, afternoon and evening, depending on our time zone. I guess everybody had a special weekend, Easter and the Ramadan season and all of that. So we held obedience everywhere and uh, we pray that this new month we've entered is going to move swiftly in peace uh, for everybody. So we have uh, the things I want to pro uh, bring today, especially as our own P2B, His Excellency has been moving from uh, different places as we know that uh, he, sometime in, Feb in February of um, 15th of February, he went to Tungan Madaki Primary Health Care Center. And there um, he said he was going to go back. And this time around, his excellent PO did go back and presenting a check of $2 million after visiting that very management. We are going to bring that to tell you how he was welcome at this facility, the touring of this facility, and what and what uh, transpired there. We are going to bring this much uh, later in the show. As you can see, this just happened uh, two days ago, and just one day after, he is in Anambra again. Uh, uh, worshipping with uh, the, uh, the Muslim, our own Muslim brothers in Onisha. Recall, we had people who were hitting uh, everywhere, saying P.O. is just visiting the north. What about the ones in Anambra and all of that? But they don't, uh, we said to ignore these uh, sayers because we know that P.O. will visit everybody. It is his, it's in his plans to, you know, visit uh, everybody and also thank everybody as time goes on for what they have done to for him uh, during this uh, ele the past election. And so we'll be talking more on that what happened in Onisha. As you can see, massive crowd received him in that very particular Onisha. And uh, we can just, you can just imagine the kind of love that even uh, the, the people in Onisha uh, showered on him. So um, those things are one of the things that we'll be talking about uh, today. But I will not fail to mention the fact that uh, Chief Bola Tinubu also uh, went to um, the inauguration of Senegalese president and something uh, uh, just happened over there and you wish to hear about it and uh, as you can see from the screen that is Chief Bola Tinubu arriving late after all the pre presidents were seated they have been moved from the area where they are reserved to to stay before moving them to the auditorium they are already seated in this auditorium before chief bola tunubu arrived does that mean that reducing the number of people who travel with him now will affect the timing of where and where he has going that will tell so we are going to bring this very late arrival of Chibola Tinubu at the inauguration of the newly elected President uh, Paye of um, Senegal. That and many other things uh, that we want to uh, discuss, and I'm not the only one to discuss this. I have the beautiful divine in the studio. Well, it is my pleasure to have you, particularly this episode. Thank you for joining us. Yes, as you join us, please like and share widely so that other people will also uh, get the notification that the Obedient Family TV is live. Uh, Divine, uh, earlier in the day, I saw uh, when you were having this program uh, mm -hmm. earlier in the day, I see that uh, the, peop the uh, uh, angry youths again had descended on a truck that was uh, th that uh, conveyed rice, beans, and all the food items right. in Akure. Right. And what in that your uh, earlier video, what a, what you know came over me while I was actually driving and uh, seeing that is that the the rice is said to be branded with Tinubu now. Why is the, the, the food that is said to go on distribution across the nation branded with uh, Bola Tunubu? Why is it? Is it that it is personal contribution to the people of, uh, of Ondo State, Akure precisely, or is it the, the, uh, 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 the Nigerian taxpayers' money 
that is now being branded personally for probably campaign purposes. Oh, it's just very interesting to see because um, these governments, we actually know them, they actually do little and then invest more in propaganda than actually doing the right thing, right? Because I guess um, the rights, like you rightly said, you're asking if the money for the um, branding came from his personal pockets. Well, we wouldn't know that, but if we were to go by the antecedents of our um, you know, political elites, we know that this money is actually coming from the coffers of um, Nigeria and from taxpayers' money. So they were rather actually, instead of investing the money in actually making more food available, they would rather invest in, um, it into, you know, branding because, I mean, it's Tinubu's right. But to be honest, that is of little concern to the hungry Nigerians because whether or not it was Tinubu's right, it did not save them from plundering, plundering the, these trucks, right, and actually reaching for this food. And Plus, secondly, the fact that it was not actually being, um, you know, publicized because if you decide to actually share these grains we should have some level of you know publicity coming to the fact that okay you know what on so 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 day we're going to share you know this um food item someone on x actually had made a point or a perspective basically saying that um there's a situation or there's a possibility that you, they were sneaking in these grains to the southwest to actually share to selected people because that's the only reason why they were unable to actually publicize it because i doubt the people will plunder a vehicle that is coming to provide this right to them or these grains to them. Yeah, talking about the uh, uh, the vehicle, uh, somebody just sending a message uh, saying that this resident actually overpowered the, the truck driver. Then they took away the rice, the beans, the gari, but obviously that is branded in Tunubu's name in Ondo State. And, you, you know, it has a kind of gone viral and people are actually saying a whole lot of things right. against... Tunubu branding some of uh, these uh, uh, items that are food items that are supposed to be going out. And the state governors are actually doing the same thing. Right. They brand most of the things that the state actually uh, taxpayers' money. They shouldn't do that. It's not their personal uh, property. I mean, if the rice is written Federal Republic of Nigeria, I mean, that is okay. Right. But putting uh, Tunubu's uh, picture and Tunubu's name there shouldn't happen because it's not his personal money. Anyway, let's not uh, dwell on that because you've treated that very issue but again for those people who think that these uh, angry youths are actually uh, looting uh, these items and uh, somebody is also asking a question on, on this very uh, part of the um, platform that uh, how did the youths got to know that this very particular uh, truck was actually loaded with food see may I tell you my brother food they smell People, when they're hungry, they like, uh, uh, like, oh. now I give you dog, where we say if they go, you go, they do, hum, hum, hum. you go, they hear the smell. Person, when hungry, no where food day. And if they not tell them, if one person see them, you go, go tell multitude. I make we know they talk, say these people go still, because if this very food, where then they talk, say now food, where we say now it's there for distribution, when they no talk, say then steal anybody property. What they do now, tap him, and then just tap him, then go for a road, and then tap this thing. Make we leave him like that for now. But if you think, say, now still, then still, oh, you fit, uh, go comment section, go put him like that. But person when hungry, um, and you see something where we say there for road, where we say they no one give him, and that thing indirectly uh, belongs to him, then we should know that uh, something is uh, distant. So let's uh, leave that very party that has been treated. Uh, we don't condone. Uh, people who loot or people who steal, but at the same time, hunger in this land, that hunger doesn't motivate obedience to go stealing. You understand me? Right. So they do the right thing and get, uh, get it done. But let's, uh, why we are even still on Chinubu, before we go to the major thing we want to talk about, P.O. celebrating Easter with the Muslim brothers in, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Onesha and the people he visited at um, Abuja. Let's quickly treat this issue, um, Chinubu going late. As the chairman of ECOWAS, he went late to the inauguration of the president of uh, this uh, Senegal, which is um, Fire. So what's your thoughts on this? Because I believe that being, uh, Tunubu being the chairman of ECOWAS, he should even be there on time before the other delegates and the president that are there to be able to, you know, handshake them, have some kind of theta, theta meeting, bilateral discussions and all of that. Why must he come late? And then they'll have to usher him to the seat, the reserve seat for him. 
Well, um, I think with leadership, you can actually choose to do two things, right? Either choose to lead by example or choose to actually do little just because you already have power, right? And so um, some people choose to actually do the right thing to be um, some form of, um, you know, example, to do exemplary leadership like his excellency PO. He is um, Chief Tinubu, he's the president of ECOWAS, and with this position, he can choose to actually come early or come late, but we know which is right and which is wrong. Like you rightly said, um, if we have other delegates or people who are gathered there to witness, you know, the inauguration and the swearing in of this 44-year-old president, well, I think it is very necessary to have our um, you know, president who actually happens to be the chair of um, the economic community of West African states to actually be there on time. But you raised the point earlier when you said maybe because he had reduced the amount of delegates who travel with him on international trips, maybe that is why um, it's, you know, it's less effective. But I just, you know, I just think it is probably intentional or maybe he just decided or couldn't really care enough to actually go on time. Or maybe he's looking for the P2B's effect. <laughs> you know, whenever P2B comes, hey, everybody will be there. And trust me, if P2B uh, uh, is the person stepping into that very place as the person who we are giving our votes, stepping in there, you will see the ovation that we will. You, you get my point. Yeah. We don't need to overstress it now. Basically. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And another thing that is striking is Tunubu is going for the inauguration of a 40 something years old. I mean, he's half, th this guy is like half his, uh, half his age so to speak yeah. or even uh, uh, about being his son because we know his daughter is 60 something years old right well, so even his daughter is older than the guy right. now he is going there what is he going to learn from a democracy a democratically elected president that is in that place well i personally think um Ikudo should go to the um senegalese um, electoral body to be very honest because it's one thing for the people to vote and it's another thing for you to let the will of the people actually prevail. So the Senegalese people voted and um, major kudos to the electoral body for not selling or stealing or trying to maim their voice as a people. They went out en masse and they voted for this young man. And um, you know, it is actually very noteworthy to know that these people actually gave the mandate to who the people gave it to. And so I next should actually borrow a leaf from these people. Next time, when people come out, come 2027, don't allow yourself be a tool to actually steal um, the will of the people. Yes, yeah, so now for Nigeria and then they steal the will of the people. See, I'm, everybody don't sit down for that very place finish. Now that time, now they work at the enter. So what do you want here again? I know they say come out late for Nigeria. We know the time where it take come out for here. So you know even supposed go late for that place at all. Mm -hmm. This uh, and then they won't make investors. They come invest for Nigeria. But anyway, Sha, we still get back to that very thing. Uh, not today, anyway. But we just want to uh, bring this fact that uh, we are the opposition, and whatever is coming out from the federal government or uh, the cabinet of uh, Chief Bola Tinubu that is not going well, you will make it as a point of duty to bring it to all Nigerians uh, to know that this thing is wrong and they need to work to correcting it. Just like we mentioned about delegates, and we helped on it, and uh, finally he seconded and uh, has to make sure that there is no much uh, on that. Now let's get back to the main thing that we want to talk about, which has to deal with His Excellency P2B, who on Saturday uh, was in that very Tongan Madaki Primary Health Care Center, and uh, as promised, did actually deal with uh, the uh, with the people uh, and uh, supported them with the sum of two million naira, and we have a lot of reactions. People continue to say a whole lot of things and all of that. He, what PO is doing, he will visit and he will check the environment. He will see that do you people need support and he will come and he will support you. And I'm sure there are some of the places he has gone to. He doesn't need to go back. He will send people to go back to that very place and then mobilize them. Like places where, I, where he has done borehole. So I will be, we'll be bringing you... Uh, all what uh, he spoke about, as you can see, he's talking right now. But uh, I want this very uh, everybody to hear what His Excellency has to say. The responses that came with that, I want that to be when uh, we are through with uh, the thing, because I will want everybody to actually pay attention to listening to this. But let's move back a little. After coming out from that very uh, Tonga Madaki uh, healthcare center, uh, PO went straight to be received by a massive crowd in Onisha. You need to see crowd or more. 
P2B is loved by Nigerians. There is no doubt about it. All these naysayers and soothsayers, look at this. This is not a campaign season. But look at His Excellency. This is not a campaign season. This is just him going to have prayers for with the Muslim brothers in um, the central mosque. And this is the crowd. These are not hired crowds. These are not election time for you to say, oh, somebody has more um, motivated or people have mobilized them. This is the majority president that we have seen. And of course, he's doing the work. Of course, uh, not necessarily that he must be in Asorok to, to act as a leader because the president is actually a leader. So he's still acting as that very leader that he is. So please go to comment section. Tell us your love for PO on what he has done. Let's read what he said and what he also said uh, about the, his visit to this very place on Sunday. He said, in continuation of my Easter Sunday activities yesterday evening, after sharing the Easter joys with the inmates of Onisha Correctional Center yesterday, I was at the Central Mosque, Onisha, to pray with the Muslim community in the city who are in the last 10 days of the Ramadan fasting. It was heartwarming to see how they were able to judiciously deploy the little resources I gave them last year for the renovation of their mosque. I took time to remind them, and indeed every Nigerian, of the need to rise above religion and tribe, but in unity and brotherly love. Continue to work hard for the development of our dear nation. Our many challenges in our nation can be conquered by a, a unity of effort, collaboration, and mutual respect. As I have always maintained, no religion, tribe, or political party buys food cheaper in any market anywhere in Nigeria. We must therefore join hands in moving our nation from consumption to production for the good of the society. I share my little Easter gifts and financial support with the community and appreciated them for their kind words, encouragement, prayers. Together as one, we will build the new Nigeria. Signed, P2B. So, uh, Divine. You know what is unique about these people used to say that uh, P2B is tribalistic. I even have something about Daniel Buala that says something about... I had so many people who, says, who just want to get impressions on X. They will now come and then start talking some, some things. But P.O. has systematically going in every uh, um, uh, distance of Nigeria, the, the regions of Nigeria, and he, doing good. Just like our Bible tells us, when Jesus was there, say, anywhere he went, he was doing good. You understand? And he said we should follow his example. And that is what Peter B is doing. Anything to the contrary, you think? Well, um, no, I'm actually buying your ideology, to be very honest, because people like Daniel Bwala, who actually come out to spew um, rubbish, because I actually think it is rubbish to come out and say all the things he says on X. He's just, um, you know, farming for his um, little ex um, impressions and um, actually trying to get his own bit of the money that Elon Musk is sharing for people who use Twitter Blue, right? So I actually pay him no mind. After all, he was the one who came out some years ago and we saw his old tweets where he said that um, automatically when you join APC, you lose your um, ability to... Um, cognitive reasoning, right? Yes, that reminds me, Divine. Uh, this is the post that uh, uh, Daniel Bora posted then. He said the human brain is unique and miraculous. He said it works and functions optimally 24 hours a day, 365 days a year until you join APC. Then it stops working. So my guys, all obedience and well-meaning Nigerian. Daniel Bora's mind, his brain has stopped working. Since he has started, uh, every time you see him, he's either attacking P2B, he's attacking... The other day, he came out to say that, P, uh, that P2B has jumped from a Labour Party, has gone to SDP. Uh, P2B has to come out and say, where is this coming from? 
we are this man, but we don't want to give him much of a credit. That's why we don't want to prolong that very tweet over there. If you want to hear the Lambas and what people have to say, of course you can go to his page, but we don't encourage that. We just want you to know that Daniel Buala has started acting not just for Chibola Tinubu, but he has started acting for the APC, which he said that the moment you join them, that your brain will stop working. His brain has stopped working at all. It's about his stomach. Just like uh, Shane, Shane Hussani said earlier in the day, uh, you mentioned uh, Shane Hussani, mm -hmm. where he said that uh, Jaribe doesn't want to get into Wahala uh, by what, uh, the, why having that conversation at Arise TV, he had to run away. And the major thing, if you read uh, Shane Hussani, Senator Shane Hussani's uh, post, is the fact that money was involved, and that is the post. This is Senator Sanitpo. He said, Senator Jaribe escaped from the Arrive live TV interview. Look at the word that he used, escaped the interview, not to get into trouble in the Senate. Now, actually, that's why many lawmakers are running away from the media and the social media. Now, when a senator is suspended, no cobo go enter him account. You see this one. Right. That one, you want to make everybody understand the last part. That's why you speak and for broken. Mm -hmm. No money go enter your account when you suspend. That's why Ningi now no get money. In don't they do any kind of made them give and uh, made them leave the suspension. Right. So the man, when they just talk because they know this budget that they have done to Nigerian is like a disservice to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And nobody is actually even looking at uh, where these constituency projects are talking about is going to be uh, uh, executed. We should all focus, I think, we should all focus in our various constituency to actually see that we defeat them. Because defeating them means showing that that money that was budgeted for that pro uh, uh, project were not executed. Well, um, it's just very interesting to see because the majority of our politicians and the people who were sent to represent us or the people who sold their way into power actually keep playing, um, you know, stomach infrastructure politics. Like um, Senator Sheo Sani rightly said, he was avoiding, Senator Jack actually avoiding um, having conversations on the budget because he saw what happened to um, Senator Abdul Ningi of Bauchi Central. They made a scapegoat out of him. So right now, nobody wants to speak. It's a situation of even if you see, you close your mouth because if you open your mouth, there are consequences. And, you know, in this particular part of the world where, you know, um, exposing a crime is actually being treated as if you're committing the crime itself. That is when you know that you know what we have gotten to the height of doom, to be very honest. So, um, like Senator Shea Hussani rightly said, he is not far from the truth. We know why um, Senator Jaribe escaped or excused himself from the Arise TV interview. He just doesn't want to be caught making, um, you know, whatever statements, and he does not want to be suspended because he needs the Red Assembly. Now, man. escape. The man escape. Mm -hmm. Him for go answer the question. She the lady, they even tell us, made them forget that thing where they made them go to the yeah. next discussion. Now, it come wrong, come on. Now, it wrong, it wrong, come on. He say no one to Wahala. You understand me? Now, be say Niger itself get to Wahala. You, you get my point. Even in the uh, in their red chambers, there is Wahala. Serious one. Look at this very Easter. Everybody, uh, most of the senators has gone to their respective places. It's either you are seeing them talking about Thanksgiving this, you'll be seeing them about, uh, you know, jubilating and all of this. But the masses, the masses are hungry. I should be seeing them when they come back, they'll be doing a handout, you understand, and all of those food items. And it's very interesting because all these Thanksgiving they keep doing in their various constituencies, I doubt that the um, citizens or the members of these constituents actually share their joy in the Thanksgiving because when they go and collect their thousands and millions and trillions and billions of taxpayers' money and put in their personal wallets, of course they have every reason to, you know, do Thanksgiving because now they've actually amassed wealth for themselves. But the people who sent them to represent them actually cannot share in this their enthusiasm or in this their joy for the season because even the Easter that we did, how many of Nigerian families actually were able to, um, you know, um, celebrate the Easter without thinking about the financial implications or the fact that they were unable to, you know, do much for themselves. But our senators are doing Thanksgiving in their constituencies, Thanksgiving that their people don't share. Do you recall that Tinubu has approved FCT's 1.1 trillion uh, 2024 statutory budget, 1.1 trillion. He's just equipping 
uh, this guy, Nyeson Wike, to continuously fighting uh, Rivers people because it's these very things that gives him power. The other day, he called for a media chat, and this media chat comprises of uh, uh, both uh, channels, uh, TVC and the likes. They go there because they all get money from there. Mm -hmm. He want to get cheap publicity. Because why I call it cheap publicity? Because it goes to individual pockets, not rightly to those people because right. he will be saying that and they just went to come and have a media parlay. Nothing like media parlay. These guys are going there because he is giving them money. You get my point? He wants them to be projecting what he's doing and him talking. He wants to remain relevant. I mean, it's like he invites them and say, he hello, you guys, come to my um, studio. Come and actually have this chat with me. Because I think a media um, you know, chat should involve the media actually reaching out to you to hear from you. But like you rightly said, we, uh, it won't be actually surprising to me to actually hear that he actually invites them and tells them, you know what, come and interview me, actually. I have a lot to say. But that's really um, besides the point. What struck me about this 1.1 trillion naira um, statutory budget for 2024 for just the FCT is the fact that... Um, um, in, during the breakdown, or according to the breakdown, it said 140 billion of this um, 1.1 trillion era is actually going to be going for personnel management. So basically, if I'm to go by personnel management, it is to say um, for recruiting staff that are going to work in the FCT mm. for the 2024 fiscal um, year is when we're what we're going to be uh, marking a whooping 140 billion. He mentioned some other amounts of money that actually came together to make this 1.1 trillion. And I just think it is very um, hilarious. Not hilarious because it is actually funny, but hilarious because we're seeing firsthand the kind of nonchalance that this government actually has to 1.1 trillion. And we're talking 5 billion for student loans. And here we are. It well, is just very sad. Let them continue. <laughs> let them continue. But anyway, uh, before we finally uh, give you the soundbite from uh, His Excellency Peter Bisbisik to that healthcare and what he said and what also the people over there uh, mentioned and all the people who also went through this very trip with him, we are going to present that in a short while. But before we present that, I want to uh, do the need for what I promised obedience to be doing every day for them, which has to do with announcing the structure that the obedient cooperative society is putting in place, which is the structure that the obedience worldwide are expected to, pro to do as a structure. This very structure is a cooperative multipurpose society that should be registered in every local government. If you wish or you are an obedient and you are in a particular local government, go and make inquiry on how to register the obedient family cooperative society. This is building the structure that we have been talking about for a while. The advocate is now. Please, wherever you are. The one you are seeing on your screen is the one that's been registered already. It has a bylaw. It has this. And at the end of the day, we are going to have a constitution that will guide all of them across the 700 and something local government. Now, why we call it a multi-purpose cooperative society is that it will take care of the reconnection of all obedience with, uh, uh, with for mutual benefit on business. Now, our... Our um, own uh, president, which is P2B, has always talked about moving from uh, consumption to production. We tend that these cooperatives within their respective local governments will be supported financially and otherwise to make sure that they are moving, that most of them that are already into production continue to produce for our consumption and also for export. We also support, this cooperative will also be supported by obedience to, uh, for, for as a welfare for all the community in their respective local governments. We have to do it in the local government because it, it will have to be, the structure needs to be strong. The structure needs to be strong. So please go to your local government or the Ministry of Commerce of your state and find out how to make this registration. If you have uh, financial constraints, join our community WhatsApp platform and give us the details there. We have obedience who are supporting financially for the registration of these cooperative societies across all the 700 and something local governments across Nigeria. The sooner we do this, the better. Very soon, PO will be going for 
for thank you, uh, this thing that he has promised to all Nigerians. And we expect that every local government, their cooperative society will be mobilized to meet him in those respective states. Thank you so much as you do join or The link to join the Obedient Family Cooperative Society is actually inside this very video. That is at the... Um, at the content, at the description of that very video, we have it there. Every Saturday by 9 p.m., we do have a Zoom meeting. So this means that in three days, four days time, we should be having a meeting and we employ you to join us. So that will be all until tomorrow when we come back. I'll be bringing more and more obedience that are joining and then the certificates that they are bringing in to the table showing their local government that have been registered. Now, finally, before we leave, please do uh, watch this very particular incoming of PO's visit to the, uh, this healthcare facility where he also deposited the sum of 2 million naira for, uh, for their doing things over there. Do watch this until tomorrow we'll come your way again. Bye for now. The good people of Tungamadaki, a remote community in Abuja, woke to the surprise visit of Peter Gregory Obi, Labour Party's presidential candidate in the last general elections. His visit premised on one made during the World Seek Week on February 15, 2024, when he assessed the only primary healthcare center, which obviously needed an upgrade and staff support. His return is to fulfill the pledge of 2 million naira to make healthcare services available to the community and its environment. Thank you, District Edge. Let me, let me most sincerely thank everybody this morning. Um, like Dr. Moore has said, we came here a few weeks ago as part of our tour during this Muslim fasting period. And when we came, we visited so many places from Sokoto to Kebi to Niger, uh, Suleja, Lafia. We came here and we noticed that the condition of this primary care center requires some repairs here and there, which we estimated that it will cost about two million naira and that is the only reason why we came today and then we met your daughter where's Aisha? Aisha? I met Aisha, your daughter very hard working person when I came he was the only one attending to all the women so, eh? Oh, no. I so, I so basically we are here to present the check to Aisha, but I'm happy that uh, all of you came to receive me, what I will promise is, is this it? and everybody I will come back, I will not come for the village, because maybe there is other things to do in the village. Most places we get, went, we get them both home. So we're not going for the village. Today we are here for the primary care. So you collect details of this is that maybe there are things we can do for them. Thank you. So very nice. I will present it. Thank you. I so with your permission, we present the check to Aisha. Aisha, here. Yeah. Aisha, come here. Sorry, can, can you stand in front of me? Okay. This is for Aisha. Aisha. Okay, get in the back. 
So what we are doing is the chat presentation to Aisha. And because Aisha has been very dedicated staff on her own, I'm also giving her a check of 100,000 naira for her own, for her hard work, so that I can continue. And I promise I'll be back in the village. Thank you. Thank you. This is the primary health care. We were here a few weeks ago, and we surveyed and found out that there's, it is, there's a lot of disrepair. Like if you look at the roof, look at the systems internally, it is all working. So we promised that we are going to come, repair a few things for them, which we estimated at about one point something million. So we decided to come and give them a check of two million naira to do it. And the day we came, there was only one nurse looking after over 50 women. And to encourage that nurse, I felt I should give her something. That's why I came, gave them the check of two million and the 100,000 to the nurse just to encourage her. And like I told the village, I tend to come back again. It's all part of my tour of Nigeria, visiting the people, knowing and studying and learning what is wrong or so, what is the need. So the district has said something very germane that no politician, no politician has actually taken time to visit them. How would you be taking this message that he gave to you? It's a message where I have everywhere I went, where I went to provide water in Kebi, Sentin, where I went to do so many other places, where we provided water in Faculty of Agriculture, in University of Sokoto, the same thing. You know, nobody in that faculty in particular, not the university, in that faculty in particular, it was the first time an individual other than government is giving them something. You know here, we do not plan this politics the way it should be. Politics for us is transactional. So it's only during the election that you see politicians. After the election, there's no more. But public life is something you live with in and out of office. If you choose to do it, even if it's to just go and visit and encourage people, that's enough. This society, this community, look at the crowd, require this type of facility, at least two. But even the one they have is not very functional, it's not updated. So you need to do something about it. And that's what we're talking. Today we have infant mortality problem where Nigeria have overtaken India, a country that is seven times our population, in infant mortality. And it's because our primary health care is not working. So we need to make it work. We need to ensure that people have drinking water. We need to show so there's so many things we need to do across the whole nation. Um, finally, sir, um, most politicians after election hearing, they stop. But you have continued. Why have you taken this? Trip? Because that is what being a public, being in public life is all about. It's actually more when there's no election than when there's election. The district head of Tungamada, Kimala Mohammed, so full of excitement, conveyed the community's appreciation for Peter Obi's visit, he admitted Tunga Madaki is privileged and lucky indeed. He further expressed that Peter Obi is the only politician that has stepped foot into the community, let alone share with them his resources for their survival and development. We thank you for visiting us this very morning. We are not the only community in the Earth City. But we are privileged. We are lucky to have you. Sir, why I said you cannot go until we appreciate you is because since the community Tungama Adaki was here, none of the candidates from even the Senex or House of Rep so ever visit us. But it is a cross to us 
that today you have come to see us and even put in your resources to make sure that uh, our people are living in a good health. I want to say a very good thank you for you. As you come, as you come, I wish you go back safely. Amen. You will go back safely. All your good prayers should be answered by the special grace of God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you. Before leaving the community, Peter will be gifted the hardworking nurse in primary health care center, Miss Aisha, whom he appreciated for being the only one on duty attending to about 50 persons on his previous visit. A check was gifted her to encourage her and appreciate her compassion. Mohamed Jinadu, Voice TV Nigeria.